Um, the premise of Copperhead Grove, it takes place during the Depression in uh, North Carolina, which is one of the poorest areas. Yeah. And um, it's about a family that's, that was in the molasses business and their business has gone downhill rapidly like everybody else's business. And the father is uh, the patriarch of the family is also a preacher. Um, the daughter who's kind of uh, before her time, she's a very modern woman, decides that while well, kind of looking at what's going around, she returns home from Chicago, looking at what's going on in the area. She finds that these guys are making money, making moonshine. And so she decides they're gonna change the molasses company into a moonshine manufacturing plant, kind of against the wishes of some people in her family. The problem is there was a lot of criminals down there at the time and they had no idea. They, they, they had a, an older black fellow who knew how to make the moonshine very well, but they didn't know how to distribute it and sell it and, and transport it. So she gets involved with the guy involved professionally with a guy named Bobby Barlow, who's, he's kind of a savant. He's not the brightest guy in the world, but he's a savant when it comes to cars. Yeah. And he, he could rebuild an engine blindfolded and he can, he can drive anything. And so they, they kind of coerce him into driving their moonshine around. Now, the other part of the book that, that really kind of fascinated me and what led me to the story was the early days of stock car racing. That was kind of the area where it started, Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina. And basically, these were racing these family cars and family pickup trucks around a, a farmer's field. But it grew bigger and bigger over the years. But a lot of these stock car drivers were once the really talented moonshine drivers. And the moonshine drivers had to be talented because they had the cops chasing them through the hills on roads that you could barely get a bicycle down today. And so they had incredible skills in terms of driving, which made them really good stock car drivers. When I started researching it, I found out that the moonshine makers would go to the stock car races and recruit stock car drivers to go the other way too and come back and run the moonshine for them. So that, that was kind of fascinating to me. So I wanted to build a, build a novel around that whole the juxtaposition of those two arts. Yeah, yeah. And I was really interested. You mentioned your one of your characters, Ava Flagg. And Ava, um, she was really a force to be reckoned with. Resourceful, feisty. Like, I... I, I thought it was fabulous that in an area of moonshine and, and gangsters, that this is a, a like a strong woman in the role she played. So when you were creating Ava's character, how did she evolve as the story progressed? Um, well, for initially, all I knew was that she was the smartest person in the book. Yes, and that's, okay. And that's key. Yes. And also, uh, she, her family dynamic is such that she had to be the one, her, her, her father being a preacher wasn't necessarily gonna be happy with the moonshine making. Yeah. I don't wanna to do too many spoilers here, but he comes, yeah. he comes around. Her brother is a little bit dim-witted and he's 100% he's against it. Yeah. And her other brother is kind of on the same page as her, but he's a little bit, he's not quite as strong as her and he's more of the artistic type, he's a, he's a musician. Mm -hmm. And so she had to be the one that was gonna kind of steer the bus. Yeah, And it, it was kind of step by step where she kind of came to the point where she realized that drastic measures were required, uh, necessity being the mother of invention. Yeah. And she was, like I said, she was before her time and she didn't hesitate to do what she thought she needed to do. Yeah. And she, had, and she was really good at convincing other people of it one way or the other. Not always, you know, it wasn't always really nice, but she always got her way towards the greater good. <laughs> yeah. I really like I like I really liked her as a character. I thought she I loved the way she she maneuvered around the story. It was great. Yeah. Well, it's it's much more interesting to write about somebody a character like that who's really smart. Yeah. 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 So was she your favorite character to write then in the story, Brad? Would you say or Yeah, there's always a character that surprises me a little bit. Um <laughs> she was her and Bobby both because they were such opposite ends of the spectrum, you know. Mm -hmm. but the, the one guy that surprised me was Luther, the, oh. the, the moonshine guy, because he was just going to be in there a little bit. And he, there was a scene where they follow him and they find out he's selling moonshine, and that was just going to be the realization. Yeah. But then I come upon the idea that they were going to uh, hire him to, to make to cook the shine, and that's and his, his character kind of grew. 
And the other character that grew a lot was Otto Marx because I didn't want to make him just your standard bad guy. Yeah. So I brought in the baseball stuff and that. So I'm, I'm, there's a little bit of comic relief there with him, but he's still a, he's still a nasty piece of work. Yeah, he is. Um, before you even started with this, the concept for Copperhead Road, what was what was the spark that got it that got you started? I it, it, just for years and years, I've known about the the connection between the the stock yeah. car drivers and the moonshiners, yeah. and I've never really seen anything written about that. Yeah, like I've seen I've seen one side or the other side, but not the connection between the two. And it's always fascinated me. Mm -hmm. And when I started researching it, there's a famous stock car driver named Junior Johnson, mm -hmm. whose father lived in Wilkesboro, where the outside of Wilkesboro, where, the, uh, where the, the book takes place. And he went to jail for moonshining, but I thought that he had a little 50 acre farm. And I thought, well, he's, he's, he's making 50 gallons of moonshine or something like that. Well, they busted him in the thirties when Junior Johnson was just a kid. And he had 5,000 gallons of moonshine in this little farm. <laughs> you know, that, that was how that's how extensive the operation was so those stories all kind of fed into it you know yes yeah yeah now on your book cover there's a great line by bob dylan in book two we were talking about earlier to live outside of the law you must be honest and there's so much i mean that line has uh, <laughs> it made it so perfect for your book definitely but outside of the book what does that line mean to you personally um i think it's a perfect example this won't be outside of the book but it's a perfect example of ava's attitude <laughs> um, because yeah. you can do the, the right thing is not always the legal thing to do. yeah you know yeah. and we all know about robin hood right yes yes <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah so um this is so technically it's wrong but at the same time, it can be correct, and <laughs> and it can be righteous. Mm -hmm. it can be wrong, it can be righteous, but wrong, I guess. <laughs> uh, and that is perfect. So, perfect. Brad Smith, thank you so much for being a guest on All About Canadian Books. It's been so fun to chat with you. I, I like I said, I, I love chatting with you. I I, uh, I admire what you do and you're really good at it. Well, it, it's it's a pleasure and it's so much fun to meet authors such as yourself. And for our viewers, what I'll do is I'll put links down below in the description box so you can purchase a copy of Copperhead Road. I'll also put a link to Brad's website because he's got so many other books that you might want to peruse as well. And let's, I'm, I'm like, what else do I have to do here? Well, I have to give everyone a big thank you for watching and please come back, um, check out my other interviews. I post the second and fourth week of every month on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And one of my next guests coming up, oh my goodness, he is such a delight. He is a 12 year old book reviewer, Wild Willie from Nova Scotia, and he reviews YA books. So I think you'll find our conversation really fun and interesting too. Thank you for watching and thank you, Brad. Thank you. Thanks, bye everyone.